Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good morning. <clears throat> Dave Elliott here with Applied Engineering. And we will be beginning here in about 10 seconds. Hey, Dave. This is Eric here, too. Perfect. Okay. Then I will get started. Oh, did you want to put your slides up first? Sorry about that. <clears throat> That's all right. I will. I think I can grab it here. Um, actually, you know what I'll do, Eric? I'll just talk through it. Your your slides are showing pretty good right now, right? Perfect. Well, again, yeah. uh, this is the third session for this morning of Applied Day. Uh, you guys have heard me for the last two sessions, and uh, so I'll be kind of repeating myself, so, so the slides will be just fine. Um, again, welcome, uh, and thank you for coming. Um, just a little bit about uh, Applied Engineering. A lot of people don't know everything that we do here, so... Uh, just a high-level overview. Uh, we've been around for over 33 years, and um, we've been uh, meeting and exceeding engineering challenges for our customers over those 33 years, whether it be with our technology team providing training, implementation, support of software and hardware solutions, or with our services team providing design and manufacturing engineering, as well as software development and reper graphics. Um, let's see. Uh, we fit your needs. We have the talent. Our talented team of engineers will work at your site or in our design centers using the latest tools to help you with your product design and documentation. We provide the perspective. Our outside perspective will, will bring new ideas from a variety of industries and backgrounds. We have the technology. Our software team will sell and implement industry-leading design software and train and support your team the whole way. That's just a taste of our company and what we can provide for you guys. Uh, before we get started today, if you do, if you do have any questions, please uh, make sure to log them in the chat box on the right-hand side. Um, there is a questions tab in there. I will be monitoring that from time to time, but the chat just seems to work a little bit better. Uh, we can answer some of those questions live as well. Uh, if we don't get to them during the presentation, we will get to them at the very end. Um, and today, uh, Eric Miller will be presenting on uh, Autodesk Vault 2020 What's New, and I will let you take it away, Eric. Okay, thanks, Dave. Yeah, I'm Eric. Uh, the technical resources manager here at Applied. I've uh, been working with Vault now for quite a few years. Um, I, I'm sure, I think a lot of the people that are joining today are probably already using Vault, but if you're not, hopefully you kind of uh, get a little taste of what Vault looks like, so what some of the features are, and obviously the main focus today is uh, all the new stuff in version 2020 that's uh, been out now for, oh, I don't know, but a little over a month, I suppose, uh, give or take, and uh, I know a lot of our Customers are looking to move to it, and I, I think there's some great stuff in there. Um, obviously, you, if anybody attended the previous session with Inventor, you got to see a little bit of the uh, the new environment there, uh, and then obviously some of the new features that they've added. So um, Autodesk obviously continues to um, try to exceed customer needs, and and you know one of the things that I think is a real uh, I guess cool uh, thing with Autodesk is you can put those ideas that you see you know on a day to day basis like if you come up with something put it out on the uh, the idea board uh, for inventor for vault for autocad and uh, I'll, I'll try to touch on some of the stuff they incorporated from those ideas from customers and stuff so uh, they definitely keep an eye on that uh, and, and I think you know we're I work with our customers a lot on posting stuff like that out there too and and just it's nice to know that they're actually paying attention right and then you know taking some of those ideas and incorporating them into the, the next version if uh, whenever possible. So, all right, with that, let's just run through a few slides here and then I'll get into the live system. Um, so again, for those that haven't really been using, well, maybe you're in a Windows environment uh, and, and looking to uh, to kind of, you know, take your data management to the next level, Vault is a great tool for that. Uh, there's three different editions. There's the basic work group and professional. Um, I think the majority of our customers are using the professional version, which is a license. It, it's a, uh, you know, there is a cost to that, but I think the the value that you get from it outweighs uh, the cost, I think, in my mind, quite a bit. So, um, <clears throat> but it's a purpose-built tool to help you efficiently manage your engineering data, 
improve collaboration with your teams and take control of your product development process. So they've added a lot of these collaboration capabilities. Now you can uh, synchronize your projects with an outside uh, source, you know, outside of your firewall and just, you know, through the cloud, uh, synchronize back and forth. So that's kind of a nice thing. They actually kind of put that in at least some of that capability in the last version. So if you haven't started looking at that yet, I definitely think it's, uh, they've added some capability there too with 2020. But uh, <clears throat> one of the main things we'll look at today is the copy design tool. And uh, they've, they've just put some better, uh, you know, just made it a better user experience, I think overall and added some good tools in there. So that's kind of the first thing we'll take a look at. So that's automation of the design creation. So if you've got where the copy design comes in is if you have existing designs and you know a lot of our customers have you know, maybe different sizes of products or different, uh, they're, they're, you know, maybe there's a lot of similar components. Well, you don't want to always have to reinvent the wheel um, and you know, when that next design comes around. So, <clears throat> excuse me, just using the copy design within Vault is a, is a real nice seamless way to do it, to, to take an existing design and even do a few of them at a time. Maybe you have uh, several assemblies. You want to take those. Maybe you want to reuse some parts, copy some parts, and take them into uh, you know the next design or the the you know your new uh, new version of of that product or whatever it is. So uh, the copy design is great for that. And we'll talk about optimizing some design workflows to accelerate documentation. And then again, the the collaboration part of it. Uh, the project sync's been there. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about that too, but they also now added some stuff with BIM, um, which I know a lot of our customers, if you're attending today, you're, you're, you're most likely on the product design side, but if you do have maybe different divisions of your company working with BIM, uh, BIM 360 specifically. Uh, so BIM, BIM, if you're not familiar with it, is build, building information modeling. And so Vault now connects with that uh, much more seamlessly, or they kind of just added that in now. So with BIM 360, it's kind of a one-stop shop for that collaboration between outside of Vault and, you know, the people in, you know, working in, in Vault itself. So <clears throat> we'll just touch on that a little bit and then look at the project sync is kind of a similar capability. All right, so automating design creation. Let's take a look at some of the things we've added now with copy design. I think, you know, a lot of our customers, if you're using Vault Basic, the, the tool still looks a little bit different, you know, different than what I'm going to show you today. The Vault work group and the professionals really where the you know, the extra benefit is there for copy design as far as, you know, automatic, you know, numbering procedures and different definitions that you can add, uh, defining rules, uh, making sure the right revisions, life cycles get started on those initial, uh, you know, new new parts, new assemblies that you create. And then also the design documentation comes with, uh, you can either turn that on or off. Um, and then as far, you know, if you are using uh, Vault Pro, you get bill of material management along with that. So, um, just better capability of turning attachments and bomb items either on or off, depending on if you want those. If it's just kind of a conceptual thing, maybe you're not ready to, you know, to, to create bomb items uh, directly for those all those things yet. So um, the, the toolbar is, is now customizable. So that's kind of the menu. Looks a little bit more like your regular Vault interface. Uh, they kind of just kind of streamline that a little bit better for uh, you can do more stuff right within that window, either filtering or, uh, you know, just, you know, being able to actually edit the name of the file right in the, the main window. So there's some cool stuff like that we'll take a look at. Um, so simplifying the user interface, that's kind of what they're looking at here. So the documentation folder now contains, you know, the drawings, if you want to either show those or don't show those, but you can kind of know if you have the include drawings automatically, they just kind of happen in the background. You maybe don't necessarily need to see the drawings, but it'll you know, give those a new name if the assembly or the, the part gets a new name as well and bring those with. Uh, so we can turn that kind of on and off. There's different uh, panels or the, the panels are are, are, sh are not shown now on the right side by default. Uh, they kind of just did that to simplify it. I still don't mind having those on. I'll kind of, you know, show you what, what I mean by that when we get into the live system. But um, you can you know, add parts easier, clear clear that, you know, initial assembly easier and kind of keep the interface open because you know, a lot of the times you want to be able to have that copy design tool, but then still navigate between the different folders, um, you know, in, in the in the main uh, grid there. So it gives you that option. <clears throat> so uh, like we talked, you know, as far as copying um, things, we can, we can do that. Basically, it's like when in doubt, right click is kind of the you know, for most softwares these days. So if you select, 
a group of files or just a single file, right click on it, you'll see all the actions that are available there uh, for copying, reusing, uh, showing in the options up on top, you can actually just have it remove all attachments or remove all the bomb objects. That's what we were talking about uh, with the items uh, that maybe you don't necessarily need to bring with. Um, and then there's options there to automatically copy parents or link drawings with the model. Uh, that's one of the things I like, you know, a lot of people, I think inventor users kind of get used to doing like a save a copy within inventor. Well, that, that can be handy, but you can't do multiple assemblies at once. Uh, it's, it's just a little more clunky. And then as far as bringing all the drawings with for the, some of the component parts, that's a little more difficult too. So the copy design within Vault is uh, just a nice, easy tool for that. And obviously, you know, you may need to go, once you get the copy done, then you go into Inventor and then you kind of hit the ground running there, you know, check out the new files, start modifying them, but you already have kind of a baseline there to start with at that point. Um, just to note, I got a couple of the items at the bottom of the list here. So pre-check enhancements, that, that's going to take a look to see if there are any existing uh, naming conflicts out there. Like if you have the unique file name checkbox uh, option selected for Vault, you know, you don't want to create names that are already, you know, files that are already in the system. So it'll do a pre-check on that. Uh, there's also then an export copy design operation. So, you know, it'll just kick out what you did. So creating, you know, these these three files were new, those ones were excluded, these ones were reused. You can kick out a spreadsheet for that to kind of just have a better documentation of what you did in the copy design. All right, a couple other things here, uh, you know, in addition to the copy design, you'll see now the, there's just some, there were some things that just didn't work like you would want. Like if you right click, so this feature was in there before and you may not, maybe you didn't even realize it, but if you right click on a, on a file within Inventor, within the Vault tab, there's a go to, go to Vault folder. So that's just kind of a nice way, instead of having to open up your Vault client, you know, do a search on that part number, uh, the go to Vault folder, right click on that part, it'll take you right to it. So then you can just easier to see all the properties and maybe you're gonna, um, you know, you know, want to check out the parents and children of that specific assembly, you know, things like that. Uh, those are things you want to do within Vault, maybe not necessarily within Inventor. So that go to Vault folder, it used to open up a new client. You know, it wasn't, you know, if you already have Vault open, it's it's nice to just keep working in that same environment, not have, you know, two, three windows open, obviously. So they just kind of fix that, make sure that it goes right to the Vault uh, client that you currently have open. Another just kind of, you know, minor thing, but it is, you know, uh, a nice addition is that now when you do a renaming of parts, it automatically updates the part number by default. You know, that is still an option you can turn on and off, but uh, right now they turn it to so that it, by default, it's going to automatically update the part number. Uh, that's a property based off of the file name. And then it talks about factory file numbering scheme support. So uh, when we use factory design utilities, uh, that you can set up your scheme, the file numbering scheme within there, so it, it will support that now too. Well, let's take a look at some of the design uh, optimization of documentation here. So, well, this is a nice little addition. What they did is add another field. Uh, so it's basically another property associated with a part or an assembly, and it's and it's called has drawing. Uh, so you can add that as a column. Uh, you can use it for uh, you know, rules, you know, creating rules based upon that for releasing files that you want to make sure if, if you're going to release a part or an assembly that does have a drawing associated with it and maybe release that at the same time. So that little has drawing will pop up just kind of a little indicator that, yes, there is a link to a drawing instead of having to do the, you know, go to the where use all the time. I mean, that gets to be kind of, you know, just extra time consuming and you have to do it kind of on a case by case basis or, you know, a part or assembly by assembly. So now you've got a little uh, column there that says this this uh, particular part or assembly does have a drawing associated with it. Uh, another nice thing, so in, in 2018, I think it was, that they added PDF generation, which was a huge, you know, uh, hit, I guess, you know, for customers. Uh, PDFs are pretty much what, what we all still use for the, you know, distributing of, of a, an actual drawing. You know, if you're going to send it to a customer, Obviously, it's nice. There's a there's a several nice things about a PDF. It can't be modified without, you know, going into a, you know, a, a Adobe Professional or something, and maybe you can modify. But it's it's typically a locked, more of a locked document, just read only. Um, but then it's just everybody has the ability to view them. So you know, I, I think obviously DWFs are still have a lot of power. I like using the DWFs that Autodesk kicks out. 
uh, because you can do you know live measurements and stuff like that on a drawing where PDFs are a little bit more locked down. You're not going to take a measurement on a PDF typically. Um, it's not really scaled that way. But uh, now, I guess, so like I said, that happened in 2018. They've Now they've added the ability to just right click on a drawing and create the PDF manually. So that's obviously a nice thing. It used to be you always had to create a life cycle state change for, and the job processor had to do it and all the time. And it's still a job processor to uh, create the PDF, but you can right click on a set of files say, you know, create, generate PDF, and then just kick off the job processor, and it'll run, it'll create all those PDFs. And the nice thing is, too, now, you can set up options for synchronizing the lifecycle state and the revision for that PDF. So that's something we really didn't have before either. So um, definitely nice to keep those, you know, kind of in line. When you're changing your parts, you want the PDF to change, uh, you know, the, the revision to match whatever you're working with there. So, um, so keep those in mind. Uh, nice to expand the, the capabilities there for PDFs. And then you can also, I guess another thing, I'll, I'll show that when I get into the live system, but you can uh, kick PDFs out just like we did with DWFs with the visualization files. You can have it recreate that uh, structure and kick out PDFs to a network folder. So instead of having, you know, I, I still like using the thin client, I think is great for outside departments uh, accessing and getting the live information. So. That's the one downside of having it create a copy and put it out in the network folder somewhere is that, you know, now we're creating copies of stuff. They're not actually looking at the live vault. However, you know, sometimes that's just the way things work better for some companies. So you have the option now to, to kick out a, a list of PDFs, whether it be a flat list or a, uh, keep the same structure and have them just navigate to a specific folder drive, you know, out that they have access to maybe the shop, maybe it's sales, maybe it's, you know, service or whatever, and go access those PDFs that way. All right, so collaboration. They did some stuff here to, to streamline that. Uh, we talk about, you know, who needs to access, you know, design data. Well, it's it's not just the engineering group. It's not just the shop group. It's it's people all over the company. So this kind of shows an example of that you might have a drafter in the top left there, the mechanical engineer, you know, making sure the, the design's going to work and meets the FEA, you know, or, uh, specifications uh, you might have well I guess that kind of shows the analyst there on the right using Nastran uh, in order to uh, uh, you know do an FEA analysis on the model if, if you haven't checked out Nastran yet uh, it's definitely it comes with Inventor Pro now it's it's been in there now for uh, a couple versions but um, I should, should since we're talking about Nastran I know they don't talk about it in this presentation but um, you know, obviously like I said check it out it's a great tool it does your nonlinear um, FEA heat transfer, um, you know, buckling, stress analysis, uh, vibration, fatigue, a lot of cool stuff in there uh, to make sure your, you know, your design works before you actually start building it. However, the one thing that that's new there with uh, with related to Vault is, uh, you know, all your FEA files when you create a Nastran analysis, it generates probably about six different files where your results are stored, uh, where the uh, the analysis is run, and and a log file. Now, those can now be, and that was a little bit difficult to kind of get those all into Vault and kind of manage those relationships. Now they have a, a package uh, from a Nastran analysis that you can package up and check into Vault much easier. So they kind of uh, enhance that a little bit with Nast, you know, related to Vault on the Nastran side for 2020. Um, so anyway, uh, anyway, just shows a few different people involved here too: plant managers, factory planners. You know, they're all accessing you know data, uh, you know, that we're creating here. We want that to be easy. Um, so there's some some different tools we can use to do that. So uh, the Autodesk Viewer and the Autodesk Drive uh, using Project Sync have been in there now. We can we can share files from Vault, do a right click, and just either upload to uh, Autodesk Drive, and that's typically using like the Fusion 360 platform, uh, or you can just update it, up, upload it to an Autodesk Viewer, which is just a cloud-based viewer that you can use to you know, send an email to somebody, give access and kind of collaborate on things that way. And then on the right there, automating the design files exchange uh, using Fusion, uh, like I said, using the, the project sync, but also now they have the ability to use uh, BIM 360. Okay, so here's a kind of an example of what used to be, you know, uh, some of the tools used to kind of kick out PDFs, kick out Word docs, kick out, um, you know, design files, whether it be Inventor, AutoCAD, all those different things. We used a variety of things. So FTP sites, Dropbox, 
Uh, Buzzsaw was a, is a cloud-based tool from Autodesk that can be used to transfer files. And then even just, you know, emails and stuff like that. So uh, we want to try to get away from that. And, and again, BIM 360, I'm guessing most of the people on the, on the webinar today maybe haven't, I haven't, you know, used that or thought about using it. So again, it's more, it's more on the building side, construction side, um, but it is uh, now they've added that into Vault to be able to use kind of one platform there to ch exchange all of that data. Um, so again, that's very similar to the Project Sync that that has been in there last year, but um, they did change. They kind of made some uh, in enhancements there. So bi-directional exchange of CAD documents uh, securely and transparently. So. Really the idea here is, you know, most companies want to have their firewall is everything inside of that is uh, protected, right? So we don't want to just let anybody VPN into our environment and just access things, you know? So the idea here is that you know, using some of these cloud-based uh, tools, Vault can synchronize outside of the firewall to uh, Fusion um, uh, 360 to those folders anyway, and then using BIM 360 to be able to you know, have somebody else uh, access the, you know, just a certain set of files with Project Sync. You can say, I want to just take this folder and synchronize it out outside of the, our environment. Let, you know, maybe it's, a, uh, you know, somebody from our engineering services group that applied. Maybe you want to have us, you know, help you out with the project. Well, you can use Vault to, to facilitate that instead of having to use an FTP site or, you know, do like Inventor, uh, you know, the what's the old... Um, the pack and go right and there's still a pack and go option within inventor and, and within vault but i think this is like going to re be replacing that or if not it probably should eventually um to just kind of make those transfers back and forth much easier and, and know who's working on what and you know we can time those synchronizations you can have it actually automatically synchronize on a you know every eight hours or at a uh, you know when you you can do it manually too so there's some some nice uh enhancements there and, and i think it'll they'll keep expanding on that all right, a uh, couple other things here. There is an inventor read-only option now. If, if you're for your kind of you know non-CAD users, uh, typically the you know, they might use like Inventor View, or I, I really like using Design Review for those types of scenarios. But uh, you can use the inventor read-only mode. Let's say it's somebody out in the uh, I don't know on the factory floor that you know needs to create a uh, well, I don't know a CNC operation on a part or something like that. So they might need more than just the inventor view, they need the inventor read only mode. So uh, that that's a, maybe a particular option for that is to, you know, set that option for them to be able to view, uh, you know, using Vault, uh, but bring it in as inventor read only. Um, let's see here, like client, you know, so if, if you have offices in, in multiple uh, countries, uh, different languages, they made the UI switch for that a little bit easier for replicating. Uh, and then also now this might be something everybody's interested in is, better or support now for several browsers. So if you're using Vault Pro, you, you have access to the thin client. That's typically the best way, I think, to distribute information to outside departments, give them the tools to go look directly into the Vault, but they're still just looking at, you know, maybe just the release data, um, you know, that, that uh, engineering or design is sending out. So then, you know, everybody else can have access to that. Just through a web browser, doesn't take a license. Um, but it used to be just Internet Explorer version 11 was the only one supported there. Now we can use Chrome and uh, Microsoft Edge. Uh, so our, our other supported browsers now that uh, are working with, uh, with the thin client. A couple other things here for new uh, numbering schemes. They've added uh, a couple here. So especially if you're using replicated uh, environments, so meaning you've got multiple locations asset accessing Vault, there's typically a publisher environment. Uh, so that would still be the centralized number generator. Uh, you go back to the publisher in a work group where you've got multiple, well, I guess when we talk work groups, that's each location connecting back uh, to the publisher. Uh, whereas if you use the simple uh, number generator, then you can actually access a separate uh, uh, generate or number generation system from each work group. So you can set that up. Uh, and also the one at the bottom, I think uh, the custom numbering generator would be something our customers would I think be real interested in. I know a lot of them have asked about that, and there are some limitations on, you know, what you can do for number generation. Uh, but un unfortunately, that one is still just uh, for the enterprise environment. So that's a kind of a a, a little bit higher version of Autodesk, uh, you know, support and helping companies to integrate with stuff. So, but just know that that is available, and I think our development team also now, being as they've kind of created some 
ability anyway to go out and customize a numbering scheme, I think we could probably help with that too. And just using the API, figure out the uh, ability for whatever numbering scheme you might might be using there. So just some extra stuff there to, to look at. So obviously, uh, it, you know, again, the ideas page is a great way to submit those ideas. Um, oh, I, should, I forgot to mention the which ones here came from. And actually, it's it's out in the, if you go look at the what's new, they kind of highlight each one. I think one of them is uh, there's there's a bunch of uh, hotkeys uh, that, that came, you know, so now pretty much every function in the copy design tool has a hotkey. Uh, let me just go show you the, so I think I have that up here. So here's, yeah, the short shortcuts for copy design. So this was something that came from, you know, there's a lot of users out there, they're power users, they don't wanna have to go browse around with their mouse and click. So just using the keypad, pretty much everything here. And, and you can go find this in the Autodesk Vault 2020 help. That's kind of what I'm showing here and look for the uh, shortcut keys here for, uh, for copy design. And then, so there's a bunch of short, a lot of these start with alt, you know, and then uh, just a, a combination of letters there in order to, you know, do reuse, replace, things like that. Uh, instead of having to go and, and right click and then find the right option. So if you're a hockey user, uh, this is good news for you. Um, there's a couple other things in there too that, you know, just came from the idea submission. So definitely uh, take advantage of that. Uh, but let's get into the live system here and I'll uh, kind of highlight some of that stuff. So again, one of the main things here, well, I guess just to kind of note initially here too, you can see the, and if you attended the inventor one, you probably saw the, the color scheme changed just a little bit. So if I go into the, you know, this drum folder, you know, you'll notice the uh, the assemblies here just a little. They, they kind of went with more of a, I would say, a softer look. You know, instead of the yellows and the oranges uh, that we had before, now it's these blues and uh, kind of. So it still shows the same symbol for an assembly, a drawing. You know, I'm just talking about the icon here next to the. So we got blue parts, blue assemb blue and white assemblies, instead of the the other color. So I think it obviously blends in some. You know, maybe looks a little more aesthetically pleasing, uh, but that's obviously kind of a, a minor thing that, that changed with 2020, but uh, at least it helps you know that you're working on the, the new version. Um, so again, I, I have this uh, particular field activated here. So you can see the this is the a column for has drawing. So again, if you just right click, you know, anywhere, basically customize view, go to your fields, has drawing, I already moved mine in here, but that's just another property that you're gonna see over on the left to be able to move in. And now I can see that, okay, this, this particular assembly does have a drawing, but a lot of these parts don't yet. So maybe when I go to release, these are at work in progress revision A, um, maybe I'm not quite ready to uh, release some of these other parts uh, until I get drawings associated with those as well. So nice to just quickly see you know, if something has a drawing. Uh, another quick thing to touch on here is the, uh, if I you know, just select some of these drawings here and maybe I want to just create PDFs to you know email or, or to let somebody see you know with um, you know through the thin client just be able to open a PDF to look at these drawings and, and just for preliminary design I just right click on that now and go create PDF okay so that send it to the job processor so if I go to the job queue up here tools job queue I can see that three three of these are pending. Looks like I had one in there with an error. I got it. Oh, I'm doing a project sync right now. So I must be, I, I think I disconnected from uh, when I came over here to the uh, different room. So I'm just gonna remove that one. Now these three should still process, um, but the thing is the job processor only checks every 10 minutes. And just so, and I gotta, I gotta fire it up here. So we'll just go to the job processor 2020. And now it automatically kicked into gear, started processing uh, the uh, those uh, three different jobs that were out there. So again, this just the processor comes with workgroup and with professional. It does not come with uh, Vault Basic. So you know, and, and that this just kind of uh, works in the background there. Now, if I refresh up here, now I've got my three PDFs that, that just come out into. And notice uh, they all came in at work in progress at Rev A. So they're synchronizing the revision to match uh, my IDW there. Now that can be adjusted. Maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want your PDFs always to be at, you know, Rev Zero or something like that. So if I go to the uh, Tools Administration Vault Settings here, you now here's the option for creating PDFs. So you can enable manual creation or turn that off if you don't want to. If you want to just make sure that those are only created during lifecycle state changes, you can still do it that way as it was before. But I, I think 
this uh, manual creation is really going to be a popular one there. And there were some third-party tools out there that kind of did that too, but you know, it's just nice to have it built in out of the box. If we look at the published location, this is what I was talking about. If you want to duplicate the file structure and just send it out to a network drive somewhere, you know, um, and then just have it automatically. If I hit OK now, once I create those PDFs during the, uh, the lifecycle state changes, it'll generate them out and put them out into uh, a folder, uh, you know, that anybody may be in the shop from the network there. So I'm going to cancel that because I don't want that happening on mine here, but just so you got the options. And then if I look at the other ones here, this is where turning off that lifecycle, oh, I guess I do have mine turned off, sync lifecycle state and revision. Typically, I want that turned on. Um, and then also, you know, as far as uploading to source location, uh, add as an attachment. So there's just some nice ability there to, um, uh, you know, turn on and off certain things there during that creation of a PDF. Oh, that was AutoCAD there too, actually. So if I go to Inventor, yeah. So options for either AutoCAD or Inventor. I was using Inventor files. So uh, there the sync was turned on, it looks like. And upload to file source is checked. So yeah, um, a few different options to, uh, to use. Okay. All right, so let's take a look. I'm going to go back here to the, I mean, uh, assembly here. So, and we're going to do a copy design and just look at some of the updates along that. So, if I right click on that, do copy design, and brings me into a, just a little bit more of a, a common interface. So, if I, you know, I can hit, you know, this, 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 you can kind of utilize this over the top of, you know, your, uh, excuse me of the regular inventor environment. So if I kind of move this to the side a little bit, obviously this can be stretched and pulled and, um, you know, and obviously now with the customizable uh, items up here, let's say I want to see the, you know, initial, the source path as well as the destination path. So to customize this, we just go choose column and we've seen this column chooser a little bit on the inventor side, but also on the vault side. So uh, if I go, let's see here, we want to do source or just, I think it's just called path is uh, uh do i already have that one in there destination path entity path oh, there is not to, let me just see here if i go i do a copy on that so there's the destination path i thought we'd be able to bring in choose You know, any of these items you can just kind of pull over there. Huh. I feel like I just did this not too long ago, actually, and grabbed path. But let's just grab a different one. Maybe it's project. You just drag project over and uh, drop it in. So I'm wondering, I'm guessing, do I just have copy design status? Unless I already had that in there. Huh. I don't know. Not seeing path. But... So these can be easily, you know, right click, you know, align them, remove these columns, reset them, or just do a filter. Um, if you, you know, double, you know, just click on the top level here to, to filter out certain items. Obviously nice to have the, the thumbnail in there is always kind of handy. <clears throat> um, but then notice in the documentation here too, that can be just, you know, either hidden or shown. If I want to be able to see that, uh, you can go to view and then just say, uh, let's see here. Uh, show drawing view so I can uncheck that. If I just trust that the drawings are coming with, and obviously again, it's one in doubt, just kind of right click if I want to grab a couple things and maybe copy the entire branch. So that just takes everything underneath. So if it's a sub assembly, uh, you can copy that entire branch to a whole new no loop location uh, right within here. So if I take those branches and maybe this is uh, you know underneath the winch, maybe these are gonna be kind of my drum components. So I'll just you know create a new folder underneath that and say maybe these are large, large drum winch, and we'll hit OK on that to put everything underneath the new path there. So if I hit that now, two another thing we can do within this interface is just change the path and actually change the new name of the file right just by clicking in uh, you know on this main grid view here. Notice over on the far right uh, these are you know, putting in, I just had new underscore as my default prefix, but you know, the nice thing is there too, I can change the rules. Uh, if I have, you know, here's where you would configure up on top, you know, just an easier way to get to it. 
Um, I can change the rule right now. I don't have a numbering scheme except for when I, uh, the one that's the default prefix. Uh, but we can change it to maybe sequential or use, I got a test scheme in there. So we could adjust those and just use the pull down here to select files and automatically apply that new name. But again, it's kind of nice if I don't want this to just be new, maybe these, these ones down here, I want to put maybe just large. These are the large drum pieces. So instead of just saying new, I'm just going to update that to large, those two top two sub assemblies. And if you expand out below, you can see that new is still coming in off of those other sub components. And you know we should still be doing, if you go to options here, um, I've got link drawings to model and automatically copy parents. So that's still happening behind. If I don't want to create the drawings right now, I can uncheck that, but um, it's, it's bringing those with. Um, and then oh, what they were talking about as far as the panels go over on the right, so they just kind of simplified this a little bit. They don't, you know, I think people were kind of getting maybe confused by the panels or whatever. So these little panels on the bottom, by default, most of those are turned off. So I look at the view, here's the panels. I actually like having all mine on and then just going between, but the numbering panel is really kind of the main uh, option here. So, and, and as far as the find and replace, we have a find and replace on this side. Uh, you can just right click in there, do find and replace or set the prefix. That's kind of similar to the way it was before, but I think now having it just in the main menu to find and replace, allows us to quickly go and say maybe instead of having everything that says new underscore, I decided, you know, I'm, I'm actually going to change the whole thing to just the large version. So go replace all with that. Now you can see all the components underneath as well. Everything changed to the large underscore instead of the new. So, um, so that's kind of maybe a nice option there for uh, using, you know, just quicker access. They're just trying to make this a little more streamlined, a little bit, the, uh, uh, better to use and not not you know a little more intuitive um, so uh, maybe I'll just get rid of this uh, column here so if I just remove, remove that column um, but yeah so and, and as soon as we're done uh, there's the execute button up on top so if we go execute copy it's saying these are the actions that's happening for these files we're going to reuse some of the bottom ones you can see and maybe I expanded out those so if I want to right click and just collapse all and then just maybe look at my top level. So I'm reusing these. Again, there's the right click, you can do the replace. A lot of times that's nice for like hardware when you've got similar hardware or do the exclude there. Uh, let's just go ahead and hit exec or, sorry, yeah, execute the copy. And now it moved the, the large assembly to just the winch folder, but now I created a large drum folder. So it's just kind of doing all those. As soon as it's completed, you got the check mark there. And then maybe I want to just jump right to this new folder. So there's a right click on that and uh, go to destination folder or source folder. So that's something they added in there too. If I just go to the destination folder, it's going to jump right to that. Well, maybe I did there. Uh, it should have really jumped to that large, uh, large drum work group. Go to destination folder. I don't know. It doesn't seem like oh, we've got a refresh here maybe. There we go. Awesome. So just to refresh it had to you know put in those new we got large drum, large drum work group. So there it jumped to uh, the folder there for actually there putting the large one in there. Uh, let's see here again. Large D block that should go to so I think it was just maybe a refresh issue. There we go. Okay. So refresh created the new folders and now I can just quickly jump to those, uh, the destination folder, while keeping the copy design dialog box open and kind of just kind of review what happened there. Uh, you can also then add more files. Maybe I want to eventually just, you know, well, clear the root node that already, that already kind of finished up. So I can clear that one and maybe just start keeping that dialog box open, you know, add some new files to that. All right. Um, so yeah, give that a shot. Hopefully uh, you find that a little bit easier to use. I know there was some, you know, some little bit of grumbling on the old, uh, version of this. So I, I think uh, they've made some nice, uh, nice improvements. Uh, a couple other things just on the inventor side, remember, uh, you know, just the, the right click here and then go to vault folder. Um, so that'll just take me right within the same. So it didn't open up a new instance of vault. Uh, it took me right to uh, the right, the right file there, right from inventor. So just a nice, easy transition back and forth there. Um, you know, if you're on working in inventor and want to just go jump back and do something uh, for that particular file. Oh, that just kind of got slid down a little bit. 
Right. Uh, I guess as far as the project sync, you know, I did want to just kind of touch on that. I know we're kind of getting a little bit closer to the end of the time here, but uh, underneath vault settings, tools, vault settings, uh, collaborate. This is where the project sync kind of happens. So the shared view is more just kind of sending it out to Autodesk viewers. So that's like on a, a right click here. If I want to just share view, it'll create, uh, you can see over on the very far right here, here's some of my shared views and I got a, a winch, the, the main assembly here has been shared. And so that just lets you create a link. You can email that to somebody or just, uh, you know, store that link to be able to come back to it. Uh, so that's kind of nice just for quick viewing of a, you know, the lighter weight file. But let's say I need to actually share the whole design. That's where that uh, upload to cloud drive. If you have the uh, the synchronization set up or the, the collaboration set up, you go to configure here and we can set up the, you know, a particular folder, several projects, and then you can, you know, control access to who, you know, who gets to see that um, and, and who's working on it. And then obviously down here, if we look at the schedule, we can have this synchronized. If I go to this, I've got a winch project here. If I go to edit on this, that's already been set up. Um, you know, we can have it enable manual sync, uh, updated release based on, uh, or update the files based on release bias. So once it's released, it'll update the file. But on the schedule over here right now, I've got it set to, to synchronize every eight hours. So if people are working on things and, you know, maybe they forget to, you know, to upload it back to, you know, the publisher, you know, at the end of the day, um, that's something that can be easily uh, set up there. So definitely uh, some nice capabilities for well, we're collaborating outside of the people that have Vault. You know, obviously Vault licenses, you know, they cost money. They're great for your team internally, but, you know, for somebody to work on it outside, maybe you're having a third party or whatever, these, these project syncs or customers even, you know, for them to be able to see things or maybe tweak something themselves. This project sync capability is uh, pretty handy. So. Um, the way to set that up, you do need to install, there's a, an Autodesk uh, desktop connector. Um, and then you'll, you'll typically, you know, if you're synchronized out to something, you'll see this Fusion. I just have a, opened up a Windows environment. Here's the Fusion uh, kind of drive underneath my PC here where that, that information gets stored. So once it's synced out there, you see Eric Miller. Um, and then if I expand that out, here's my winch uh, parts that, that synchronize through to that. So. So that's kind of the <clears throat> the way that works, um, just utilizing some of the cloud capabilities. All right, uh, I think I, I think that was some of the main things I, I did want to just mention too. Coming up, there's a um, you know a better integration with uh, Fusion Lifecycle is something that's on the uh, going to be coming out fairly soon. So if you're looking for a new PLM tool, uh, Fusion Lifecycle is a great option for that, a cloud-based PLM, but you know, obviously Vault is great for your um, managing your CAD files and then your BOM items, but then you might want to just use, you know, push that into a, a better overall company PLM. Uh, so they're, they're going to be some, uh, keep an eye out for that if, uh, if you're interested in those types of tools and, and let us know, obviously we can kind of, you know, keep you in the loop on that and, and uh, a little bit of the a fusion if you want to see that eventually. Uh, I guess with that, Dave, are, are you still on or are you checking for questions there? How are we? I guess I can look here too. I am here and there are two questions on here. Eric. Do you want to just grab those or you want me to read them to you? Uh, I can take a look at them here. So it looks like, uh, does the use, does the use require inventor installed to open inventor read only? Uh, that's yeah. Good question. I think that actually does require, you know, the read only files for inventor, um, I do think that in, that requires inventor because it does depend on how you install it. So typically that, if you install Vault first and then Inventor, that's how it utilizes opening and opening up those files from Vault in Inventor read-only mode. Um, so it's kind of a little bit different on how they do that. If you install uh, Inventor Professional first and then Vault second, then it, it puts the integration into Inventor. So I guess that's kind of one of the uh, stipulations there, but yeah, if, if you want to, if you're more curious about that, we can take that one offline and I can just kind of explain more too on what the advantages there would be. But I think the, it's primarily on how that's installed, but it does require using Inventor Professional. And can you create PDF directly from Vault Basic? Unfortunately, the PDF generation is not, um, uh, I don't believe, oh, that's not a good question. I, I was thinking that was only in Vault Pro because obviously before it was just due to lifecycle state changes. And I'm fairly certain, I could double check that too. It's got kind of a, if you go back to the help, there's, 
uh, vault release notes for both. Uh, let's see. There's the what's new. So there's a section uh, specifically for Vault Basic and one for Pro. So I could probably find that out pretty quick here. I'm almost positive, yeah. So this uh, is it showing here Vault. I believe it's only work group and, and uh, professional. I don't see the indicator right here though. So that was a Vault idea submission. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll double check, but I'm almost positive it's just in Workgroup and Pro. So, um, but I'll make a note of that and get back to the. Uh, I, can, I can see who actually asked that question, so I'll make sure to to double check that. But 99% um, sure it's just uh, Pro and Workgroup. And then there's a question here on file path. Um, oh, oh, yeah, that was somebody trying to help me out. I think when I was trying to show. Uh, adding, yeah, maybe that's what that was. Okay, so on a copy design, I was looking for just the term path, but was there a file path in there? Let's just see here. So column, choose columns, project. There, okay, it says full path. Is there a file path too? Uh, that might be it though, full path. Anyway, so yeah, thank you for the help there. Um, that is showing the uh, designs. What? Oh, that actually shows the local path. It looks like design. Well, no, it's technically the vault path too, the Project Explorer, but the full path of each folder. So yep, that that looks. That's what I was looking for. So thank you. Any other? Then your last question was: Is there anything new with the Thin Client? Oh, okay, yeah. So, like I said, the the browser, you know, the Thin Client is now supported by multiple browsers, which people have been asking for that. It, it's funny how Internet Explorer has kind of, you know, gotten less and less popular. Well, Chrome is obviously getting more popular, it seems like. So um, there is a new, yeah, so that, that's the main thing. I will just show um, something else that was added, and I know a lot of our customers don't necessarily know it. Um, let me just minimize the questions here. Is that on the settings now, and I think this might have came out version 2019, I believe, um, but now you can, so you want to be able to typically, if you're using this as more of a viewer outside of the design team, you don't want people to see release stuff. And as soon as something else is released, you don't necessarily want them to go back and be able to see Rev. If you're on Rev C, you don't want them to see Rev B and A. So that's what this, uh, they've added that in now, especially for files. I mean, items I think was out there before, but there's an option here to only allow released file versions be shown and then actually the latest version. So that'll make it always uh, the, the latest released version, um, and you don't have to worry about them trying to figure out which one's which. It'll always, you know, so then the next one gets released, uh, say Rev D, then Rev C cannot be visible through the thin client. So that's kind of nice. Um, another thing they did change, and not that this is a, a real great enhancement, I guess, but being as I think the with the use of multiple um, different browsers, let's just go back into that. Uh, say I was working on the winch, right? Um, oh, I, I showed that file wasn't released. So now notice it's not in here because I, I'm going to just change my setting back then. And let's say uncheck release so I can actually see my work in progress stuff. Um, if I look at the winch, uh, this used to within, and I'm opening, I've got mine in Internet Explorer. The little preview here used to open it into uh, the online design review version. Now, that was again only if you have the thin client, only with uh, Vault Professional, but it was always kind of a little bit, it would work pretty good um, with Internet Explorer 11, a certain version, but other times it was kind of a little quirky. So now basically they just said, you know what, we're not gonna allow, or we're not really gonna use the online design review anymore. So uh, if you're gonna be using the thin client, and I always kind of encourage this before, I always install design review, like the desktop version. And now basically they're kind of forcing that because basically when you go to the preview or even if you select the download, you know, download visualization, it's, it's just downloading the DWF. And so now if you go to open, it'll just kick it into design review, but you will have to use the desktop version or of the design review, which is a free tool. It had, it had more capabilities than the online one anyway, and it's just way more stable. So I think this isn't a bad move. I think it'll improve customer experience really, even though it might seem like an extra step there. 
um, I think it's it's still kind of the way to go. So just wanted to kind of point that out as well. Any other questions there, Dave? I'm uh, not seeing anything. All right, well, if anything else does come up here, I'll just put up the slide here at the end. Obviously the idea station, you know, the, the, obviously the Autodesk put so many things out on the, um, you know, on the web too. So that's a great place to find info. Uh, you can go check out, there's a what's new article out there. I know we didn't, we kind of got close to running out of time here. So I didn't want to, you know, obviously go through every single little detail. Hopefully, hopefully you kind of, um, you know, found the, the things that I showed anyway, meaningful and hopefully useful for you. Um, but yeah, if you have questions, uh, feel free to email me at emailer at go-applied. Um, and I guess, uh, yeah, thanks for your time and have a great day. Perfect. Thank you. And, and just to add on there that you guys will be receiving a survey shortly after this presentation closes. Uh, take about two minutes, it's only three questions. And really it's on uh, what do you think of the presentation today and what are topics for next year for our Applied Day events so that we can really streamline this to uh, meet your needs. So if, we really appreciate it if you fill those out. And we will be sending out those $100 uh, training vouchers here uh, via email here in the next uh, couple of weeks. You should see that. If uh, you do have any training needs immediately, please let your sales rep know that. Um, and again, last thing, uh, our training and webinar schedule is in the attachments here. Please take a look. We do have uh, a webinar every month. And in June, we have an iLogic webinar talking about configure world design. Uh, we have a Vault Professional webinar in July on lifecycle schemes. And there's a best practices in August on AutoCAD Electrical. And lastly, uh, September, we have our inventor collaboration talking about different tools that would be great for uh, you to use for collaborating with uh, customers, uh, vendors, um, inside your own uh, shop or manufacturing facility. Uh, so really, uh, Autodesk has spent a, a lot of money and, and time on different uh, collaboration tools here in the last year. And we really, really want to focus those for you as well and get you using them. Um, and last but not least, don't forget about uh, we've got uh, a whole more uh, one more half a day ahead of us uh, starting tomorrow at 9 a.m. FEA overview and best practices coming up at 11 o'clock tomorrow. We've got manufacturing efficiency with Steve Thompson and our last event. The sixth webinar will be at 1:30 uh, on Revit and manufacturing. Talk about BIM. And uh, so please join those uh, register for them if you haven't already. And uh, we, we really appreciate you guys uh, attending these sessions. And uh, again, please let us know if there's any topics that you guys would like us to present on, uh, whether it be a webinar or during our applied day events, that'd be great. Uh, have a wonderful day. Thanks for attending.